Well, a warm welcome to this talk. Now, we've been looking at the new research that's going to be undertaken, we believe, any week now by the Advanced Research and Invention Agency in the United Kingdom. This is a semi-secretive organisation, which, as far as I know, um, I, well, I've never been consulted on what they are doing, these plans to dim the sun. And it really is very concerning. And I've been looking into it quite a lot of, uh, in quite a lot of detail this past week, and, and what I've learned has only increased my concerns. Now, I don't want to become conspiratorial about this. I'm going to be taking information directly from here. This is from the United States government site on solar radiation management. Now, this is from this group here, National uh, Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So this is part of the United States government Department of Commerce, headquarters in Silver Spring, Maryland. And uh, they say this, solar radiation management uh, deployments large enough to temporarily offset climate change impacts could have substantial risks. Substantial risks here. We're being experimented on, I believe, people. We are being experimented on, and I don't consent. And unintended and unexpected consequences. The potential for them to completely mess this up is, is in my view, uh, extreme. These experiments need to be stopped now. And the, gov the government uh, petition is still there. If you want to sign that, I'll put the link. Let's get that up to a few more views. We really need to stop recklessness, what I perceive as recklessness in science. Now, the, uh, National, o o o the National Ocean and... Uh, atmospheric administration uh, it's one of the lead federal agencies research agencies in the united states investigating the earth system including the planet's uh, radiative balance the global carbon cycle and the chemistry and competition uh, composition of the atmosphere so we see that this is a well recognized site and uh, again i've put it there you can check it out for yourself so virtually everything we're doing today is coming directly from that site. This is not me going off on a, whatever I go off on, uh, a rant. Uh, I'm not going down a rabbit hole. This is straight from US government uh, site. This has got credibility. It's not really research-based because we don't understand these things and we don't want the research to find out because of the un unintended uh, potential adverse consequences on the hoi polloi non elites like you and me who some people feel free to experiment on without our consent. We don't consent, it needs to be stopped. Now, let's get down to some detail uh, from this site. Side effects of solar radiation management are complex chemical, radiative and dynamic interaction. So it's not, so you could suppose, let's just suppose, let's just suppose for sake of argument, which is impossible. Uh, let's suppose you completely understood the chemistry, but you don't know how that interacts with the, the, the radiation coming and going from the earth it's a dynamic interaction there's multiple variables we can't possibly pin it down to a single variable this is not like for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction it, 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 these factors feed into a chaotic complex system what do they affect again according to the sites such as changes to the hydrological cycle well rain's pretty useful actually and clouds now, I'm um, actually talking to the farmers at the moment. The wheat crop in, in Cumbria is lost uh, because of its the driest spring since, <coughs> since 1976. Changes in the climate can devastate agriculture. So in Cumbria, basically, we're not going to where I live in the north of England, Cumberland. We're not going to have a wheat harvest basically this year because it's been too dry. Now, why it's been too dry, of course, we can't, we don't know. But, but um, it just shows it's complicated. But the knock-on effects are immense. If you can control the weather, you can control the food supply. This is frightening. I really think this is frightening stuff. Um, effects on the ecosystems, of course. We are part of the ecosystem. And, of course, agricultural production. Is part of this a desire to control agricultural production? Let's hope not. Impacts on the protective stratospheric ozone layer. Now, this technique here, stratospheric aerosol uh, injection. So the stratosphere... Starts about 10 kilometres up, about, I don't know, about five, five, six miles up. 
And uh, beyond that, and they're actually planning on spraying, we believe, aerosols. Well, at least that's one of the recognised techniques. Of course, we don't know the precise techniques that are going to be used yet. But anyway, stratospheric aerosol injection impacts stratospheric ozone. Stratospheric ozone. Now, this could be done either by, before we go into look at what, why this is so bad for the ozone layer, just a minute. Uh, th this can be done either by injecting or by, uh, by direct injection of aerosols that reflect the sun, in other words, and make the, give us all less sunlight, daylight robbery, uh, or by injection of a precursor gas such as sulfur dioxide that would subsequently react in the stratosphere uh, to form aerosols. Now, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm no great chemist, but I do understand this following equation, and you will too. Um, it's, it's very simple. Um, sulfur dioxide, that's SO2, right? And, and if you add some O2 uh, without balancing the equation, you get SO3. So, um, but now, th 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 this, th this, this process here, th this, this formation of uh, sulfur trioxide from sulfur dioxide is more likely in the presence of ozone. And of course, in the stratosphere, we have the ozone layer. So what happens is uh, SO3 from, from, the, uh, from the SO2 goes to the SO3, plus water, which is available, goes to H2SO4. And I don't think you need me to tell you H2O is a, a H, H2SO4 is sulfuric acid. I remember that rhyme from school, little John is dead and gone, he will be no more, for what he thought was H2O was H2SO4. Are they seriously proposing to increase the amount of sulfuric acid in the atmosphere? This needs to be stopped, really. The, the, I mean, to increase sulfuric acid is just that we've got enough acidification of the oceans already. What are they aiming for? Complete ecological collapse. Don't answer that question. Right. Ozone. Now, other proposed aerosols include sulfate, calcium carbonate, and diamond dust. Don't know what that is, but never mind. It shouldn't be in the stratosphere. Now, the ozone layer. This is so important. The ozone layer. So, ozone is O3. Right. Uh, now... The ozone layer is a region in the Earth's stratosphere that contains a high concentration of ozone and plays a crucial role in absorbing most of the sun's harmful ultraviolet radiation. So if we don't absorb the sun's harmful ultraviolet radiation, more ultraviolet radiation will come down to Earth, causing more cancers, especially skin cancers. Make no mistake, skin cancers. You might remember that the uh, CFCs um, that, that were released from aerosols caused a, a depletion in uh, ozone above, uh, particularly above New Zealand and Australia. Um, that's why we stopped using CF, CFCs. Is it chlorofluorocarbons? I think because they depleted ozone. And now we're doing stratospheric manipulation, which has the potential to impact ozone, letting dangerous, harmful ultraviolet radiation through to the surface of the Earth. These are things we should not be tinkering with. We don't want these systems tampered with. They're working fine as they are. Thank you very much. Uh, marine cloud brightening, which is another, play, another technique that might be used. Alterations of the El Nino southern oscillator. Now, we know that when there's alterations in the El Nino, we get hurricanes and all sorts of extreme weather events. We see this on, on the news reports. El Nino alterations causing typhoons, and hurricanes and all sorts of devastating, uh, extreme weather events. And yet, this has the effect to alter El Nino. Now, this is not from me. I stress this is not from me. This, this, is, from, uh, this is from the official United States government site. Uh, there you are, El, 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 Nino and, uh, uh, <laughs> El Nino and La, La Nina effects. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but anyway, it's to do with the southern oscillations, and there's a whole uh, the whole paper on it here that tells you what could possibly go wrong. So here we see the United States: wetter, cool, colder, drier, warmer. Um, the, the, these changes, all all there. I've put the link on. Of course, you can review it, and also uh, there's a more detailed paper here 
This was particularly concerning. Let me just show you this one. Again, an official US government site, um, chapter 6, stratospheric aerosol injection and its potential effects on the stratospheric ozone layer. Now, this is a very thorough scientific document from the United States uh, government departments, and it covers the risks in, in, in really excruciating detail, and as you'll see, many pages of great detail. As I say, link, link to the uh, National Oceanographic and uh, Atmospheric Administration sites. So this work has done. The dangers are recognised, and yet for some reason, um, people in the Advanced Research and Innovation Invention Agency in my country um, seem prepared to accept these risks. The risks I'm taking, by the way. The risks that you're taking. Experimenting. Unforeseen consequences. Right, that's that site there. Check it out. These changes in the seasonal climate of the world's biggest oceans have a cascade of global side effects. So change the weather in your backyard. Change the weather in my backyard. It's a global interactive system. I'm not a climate scientist, but I understand that. Potential risks to human health and well-being and ecosystems are also pointed out again on these US government sites. Greenhouse gas induced warming and solar radiation management induced cooling. Induced cooling are different <coughs> physical mechanisms. These are not the same thing. Therefore, solar radiation management would not simply undo greenhouse gas induced warming. This is simplistic. It's not simplified, it's simplistic. Why, why don't they realise these things? Or if they do realise these things, why are they prepared to take the risk? More than a risk, in my view. And cannot reverse all climate changes everywhere. Some regions could experience cooler or wetter conditions and other warmer or drier conditions compared to a climate without solar radiation management. In addition, ocean acidification will persist unabated if the greenhouse gas emissions continue. Let's hope it's not ably assisted by higher sulfuric acid, which has a pH of 1. Produces a lot of hydrogen ions when you dissolve it in water. It's a very strong acid. Acids. Negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, pH. We don't want more of it. Let's keep it inside uh, a few batteries, but not inside our ecosystems. Solar radiation management deployment de deployments large enough to temporarily offset climate change impacts could have substantial risks. US government site, this is not me. This is not me. This is all coming from these official US government papers and sites. Um, this is recognised science as far as the science is understood. The risks are certainly understood. And aerosols are removed by atmospheric natural processes on a time scale of a few years in a stratosphere. So if they make a mess of it, the effects are going to be there for several years into the future. And we'll have to sit there and say, oh, 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 this adverse event is still happening. Let's just wait a few years and it'll go away. The uh, site, oh, th th this site here, the site that where this is mentioned is this one. Um, if I can get it. There we go. This site here, again, uh, climate.gov from the United States. Um, solar radio, this is legal and societal issues. I'll just uh, read these out for you. Um, solar radiation management deployment could also add significant geopolitical risks. Well, I would have thought, I would have thought we've got enough geopolitical risks at the moment. Do we need some more? Who would it benefit if we had more? This uneven distribution of benefits and negative consequences introduces potential significant justice and geopolitical concerns. Substantial knowledge gaps and uncertainty exists in many 
crucial air, critical areas of solar radiation management, particularly related to the social sciences. I do hope they're not implying it could be used as a form of social engineering or international geopolitical manipulation. Many of the processes most important for understanding solar radiation management approaches, such as those that control the formation of clouds and aerosols, are among the most uncertain components of the climate system. They don't know the effects of these things. These methods have the potential to lower surface temperatures more quickly than carbon dioxide removal, while posing other risks still to be understood. Now, I haven't seen the mainstream political parties saying anything about this, but uh, Mr Lee Anderson from Reform did pose a, a formal question to the Secretary of State. Uh, let's listen to Mr Anderson's question now. Lee Anderson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Yeah, the yeah. Secretary of State thinks it's a good idea to fill our fields with solar panels at the cost of billions of pounds to the British taxpayer. I hate to break it to you, Mr Speaker, but the solar panels rely on sunshine. So why is he supporting now a project to block out the sunshine? Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm not going to play Ed Miliband, the Secretary of State's response for that. I don't think he's a credible scientist. In fact, he didn't really answer the question. Um, he answered a different question. So I'm not going to give him airtime. Uh, you know, the idea that politicians can be asked a specific question and not answer the question by answering a completely different question and then just walk away. So, oh, never mind. Time for lunch. Nothing as if nothing's happened. You know, where is the public accountability here? Anyway, uh, <laughs> don't get me started on that one. So um, significant risk to the public. Let's get these stopped now. Sign the petition. And for now, uh, God bless and thank you for watching. Now, I'm not going to play the minister's reply because he didn't answer the question. It was, it was embarrassing, actually. He just didn't bother answering the, the question. Governments can do this. Opposition can ask a question and they can just say, basically, uh, I'm, not, I'm not answering that. Of course, they don't say that. They answer a completely different question. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Right. Check on the sites for yourself. This is evidence-based, science-based. If you're in the UK, sign the petition. Um, we've already got really massive concerns over the next, well, the rest, the remainder of our generation. I'll be dead before too long, I guess. But uh, our children won't, and our grandchildren won't, and uh, I find the way that their future is being gambled with and manipulated terrifying. Let me know what you think, as always. God bless and thank you for watching.